From the weird to the outright deadly, let's take a look at some of the most horrifying medical practices of the past, guaranteed to make you value the comforts of even modern American healthcare. These days, if you've gotten yourself a headache or fever, you can easily get your issue diagnosed by a doctor, and the solution to get rid of it can be easy as consuming some pills, prescribed by the aforementioned doctor of course. But back then, and by back then I mean up until the early 1800s, the best solution they had for your headache and no fever was to literally drill a huge freaking hole in your head. Oh wow doc, I feel better already. Some cultures believed that mental illness and other diseases were caused by evil spirits trapped in the body. So they saw this as a way to release these spirits and cure the patient. People started this practice during the renaissance and we actually still use it sometimes. Though these days they're less savage and are used for more sensible reasons, like to treat patients with brain tumors or intracranial hemorrhages. Of course you wouldn't feel a thing nowadays thanks to those nifty anesthetics that have become a standard. But back in the day you didn't have any of that. And trust me, you would feel everything. Hello, how may I help you today? I have been feeling very weak and my head is constantly throbbing with pain. Ah, oh, I see. Well, let's get you some relief. We shall proceed with bloodletting. Wait, what? Bloodletting was the process of intentionally draining blood from a patient's body with the belief that it would balance the humors and heal various illnesses. They believed that our bodies were dominated by four fluids, known as the humors, and any imbalance in these fluids led to sickness. The most common method of bloodletting involved the use of leeches or knife-like instruments to open a vein and let the blood flow out. Many from the 1000 BCEs to the late 1800s believed that bloodletting could cure all sorts of illnesses, from the plague to the common cold. In some extreme cases, bloodletting was used to treat seizures. The belief was that the procedure would rid the body of excess fluids causing the seizures. Again, to balance the humors. The loss of essential fluids and weakening of the body's immune system made patients vulnerable to other diseases and infections, sometimes making them even weaker to face the very illness they're trying to cure. This practice had little scientific basis and often led to more harm than good. During 1000 BCEs to the 1950s, people used to turn to mercury for pretty much everything. No, not the planet, the deadly toxic metal mercury. Got a stomachache? Mercury. Got a bad case of the sniffles? Mercury. Got no maidens? Well, mercury couldn't fix the last one, but for everything else, people used mercury. It is basically another snake oil product. Sure, drinking mercury may have given them the illusion of relieving their headache, most definitely placebo, but it also had pretty intense side effects. Oh, like, I don't know, death. But hey, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? And boy, were the people back then desperate. They even believed that mercury could cure diseases like syphilis. Spoiler alert, it couldn't. Hey, I've been taking the mercury for weeks now and my stomachache is still there. Hmm, well, let's just double the dosage then. That should do the trick. Mercury was believed to have certain therapeutic properties due to its liquid nature and shiny appearance. It was administered in various forms, including as an inhalant, in pills, or as a topical ointment. Needless to say, the use of mercury was not only ineffective, but also highly dangerous. Mercury is a toxic heavy metal, and its exposure can lead to severe health problems, including neurological damage, kidney damage, and respiratory issues. Back then, if you were struggling with mental illness, you didn't just pop a pill and call it a day. Oh no, they went straight poking at the brain in a procedure known as the lobotomy, which actually left many patients with the personality of a potato. It was a type of brain surgery that was used as treatment for mental health conditions, such as schizophrenia. And it wasn't just for mental illness. If you were a bit too emotional, they'd whip out their trusty ice pick and give you a personal lobotomy. Some people believed that severing connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex could alleviate symptoms of mental illness and reduce emotional distress. Oh. You're crying because your dog passed away. Oh, I know just the fix for you. There you go, you're no longer sad. But hey, at least they had some sense of hygiene, right? Nope, they did not. They would wash off the ice pick after each surgery with a dirty rag because, you know, germs don't exist. Anyways, believe it or not, this lobotomy trend started in the early 20th century, not that long ago. During the 1950s, people stopped using lobotomies as they were considered to be too dangerous, with a very low success rate. 
imagine living in a time where people believe that consuming human flesh and blood would heal their illnesses. Crazy, right? But back then, this was considered a legitimate medical practice because apparently, the best medicine for your body was another body. As we discussed earlier, during the medieval times, doctors believed that diseases were caused by imbalances in the body's humors. And what better way to balance those humors than by consuming human flesh and blood, which was believed to contain all the necessary elements to restore the body's health. This is powdered mummy. It is believed to cure all sorts of ailments, from stomach aches to epilepsies. The ancient Egyptians were the first ones to popularize this trend. They believed that the powder of a mummified corpse contained special healing properties. But trust me, no amount of powder could ever save you from the curse of an illness like diarrhea. In the Middle Ages, corpse medicine reached its peak, with recipes and remedies involving human body parts. Wanna get rid of your migraines? Just pop some skull powder. Feeling low on energy? Enjoy some mummy flesh. They probably had enough food types and snacks like this to have an entire aisle dedicated to just human meat products. Now you might be thinking, this is just some weird ancient medieval practice, right? Wrong. This corpse medicine trend actually lasted up until the 18th century. That's right, people were still chowing down on human body parts in the 1700s. During the 14th century, everything was unsanitary. Diseases ran rampant and personal hygiene was practically non-existent. People were dropping like flies left and right. But do you know what the geniuses of the time thought was the cause of this chaos? Why? Bad air, of course. They believed that miasma, or foul and putrid air, was the suspect for all their illnesses. So what did they do to combat this? They got themselves some strong smelling herbs and perfume and sniffed away. Ah yes, the sweet scent of lavender to cure the bubonic plague. Surely that would do the trick. But little did they know, it wasn't the bad smells that were causing the sickness, but the very obvious lack of hygiene and the contamination of food and water. They tried their best to figure out solutions to this problem they had. In fact, doctors would often order their patients to eat rotten meat and drink disgusting concoctions to purge the miasma from their bodies. And if you thought that was bad, wait till you hear this. They also believed that miasma could be spread through touch and even through thought. You heard me right, thought. So naturally, people were very wary of anyone who seemed unclean or had any signs of sickness. It was basically a medieval version of Mean Girls, but instead of being shunned for wearing sweatpants, you were shunned for looking like shit. But as time passed, people finally realized that maybe miasma was at the root of all illnesses. It was in fact germs. So they went from being fart smellers to being smart fellas. And remember, if you too wanna be a smart fella, you better hit the subscribe button along with notifications.